The next topic we're going to look at is linear regression. So we're back to the same example as we did in the scatter plot. Uh, we're looking at uh, what's called the company uh, X. Oh, it's company X. There we go. Um, they have promotions and sales. Um, and we're looking at their uh, percentage of promotions spent on promotions versus a leading competitor and their percentage of sale compared to a leading competitor in each region. Uh, now, we did determine that there is some sort of relationship between the two. Uh, it does have an upward trend relationship between the two. So let's see how good of the job of linear regression would be um, for using promotion to predict sales. Okay, so linear regression, our next example here. Uh, to do this, go to add ins, go to staff, and go to regression analysis. And we're going to choose simple, and not multiple, so multiple is the next one down. We're going to choose simple because we're just using one variable. Promote. And we're using that to predict the sales. More than one in there. Click OK. And promote is our independent. So we want to predict sales, so I check that off as dependent. And we want to uh, use promote to do that, so that is the independent of the X variable. When you do multiple, you can select a whole bunch of independent. The graph we're most interested in is the number one, residuals versus fitted. So check that one off. And then, well, you can put the information to the right of the data or, or on a new worksheet. If you're doing a lot of work, put your information on a new worksheet. Oops, just put that in there. There's not so much on this worksheet. And then, oh, just click OK. Good. Way. Okay, so what do we have here? So here's our regression output. Let's talk about it just briefly. So there's 25.1264, the 0.7623. So those guys there are important numbers so far. Okay, uh, this multiple R is also important. That's actually pretty similar to the R we got when we generated scatter plot. Standard error is also important for now. Okay, so uh, first thing we can interpret from this is uh, the following. If we want to predict sales, okay, what this is telling us is that our sales are roughly 25.1264, actually, let's make that more exact plus 0 0.7623 times by uh, the, promotion uh, the promotion expenditures. Okay. One little note here. There are more decimals to each of these coefficients. So you can expand it if you want to be more precise. Uh, these uh, constants here are what we call A and B uh, from before. If you got them in your calculator, your stats calculator, this would be A, this would be B, and this guy here would be roughly R, pretty darn close to it. So that's what those numbers are. Um, so your Y also is A plus BX, if you will. So A plus B times X, whatever your X is. Um, where this A here is your y-intercept, B here is your slope. Uh, we'll talk more about that in lecture. You can also use this equation to predict your sales, let's say, if we have a 51st region, which is what we did in lecture. Okay, let's add in a 51st region where they spend 115 on their promotions. This region doesn't really exist, but let's say it did. So in your lesson, for uh, PowerPoint, we talk about uh, this 
54, or sorry, 51st region. Uh, and we ask, what would we expect the sales to be if this region, in this region, they spent 115% uh, compared to the competitor on promotions? So going back up here, we could use our Excel output to get that that prediction. I'm going to call that sales in region 51. Uh, and so you take your 25.12 and add on 0.76 times by the sales in, or sorry, the promotions in region 51. Okay, and that will give us a prediction for that region. So 112.79 is awesome. Okay. Um, we, we could also do final thing here. We can also uh, build up a confidence interval around this prediction. Okay, so let's say the 95 is the confidence interval. Which is the one we're always going to get. Um, So to build up the 95% confidence interval around this prediction, you take that number and you, uh, first of all, to get the lower limit, add two of your standard errors. So this is the last number that's important here. So minus two times two times two. And you take your prediction and you add two times two times two. Now, why are we using two? That's related to that 95%, and that's actually related to a Z score that states that 95% of your data is within the two standard deviations, or in this case, two standard errors. Regression. So there we go. So there are our limits for our 95% confidence interval. Now, what does that mean? Uh, if we were to interpret that in words, Remember the sentence from before? You would say, I am 95% confident that the true sales percentage in region 51 is between 98% and 127.5%. Okay, so that gives you, uh, so you get your prediction, uh, and you realize, okay, it's not going to be perfect. That's just an estimate. So I'm guessing that the sales in that region are 112.79% of the leading competitor, but that's just an estimate. So what I can also build up is a confidence interval around that to say, okay, I'm almost positive that sale, if this is my estimate, I'm almost positive in this case that the actual sale tax is somewhere between 90% and 120%. That's actually a pretty large region, um, but that is our comp.